How's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you three different ways to improve your JavaScript code quality. If you wanna make your code cleaner, easier to read or easier to maintain and extend upon, these three things should help you out. Okay, let's have a look. First on this list is gonna to be to avoid using else or else if statements where possible. Now this typically applies to functions, but it can also apply outside of functions. And I'm gonna start off this segment by simply stating that uh, I can almost guarantee that in nine out of 10 situations within your code, you can probably avoid using an else or an else if entirely. Okay, so let's see what I mean by that with this function here called get theme colors. Now this function, as it reads below, is going to return uh, an object containing two properties here, a text color and a background color. And we can also see that uh, it's gonna use the current hour of the day to determine if it should be light mode or dark mode. Of course, light mode, meaning a, uh, uh, a darker text on a white background. And of course, dark mode, meaning a white text on a dark background. Now we can see here between the hours of 8 p.m. and 7 a.m., so more than 20 for the current hour and less than seven for the current hour, between those hours, we want the user to use dark mode, otherwise light mode. So how can we avoid the else in this function here? Well, it's actually very straightforward and it's one of four ways we can improve this function. Let's begin by removing that else. We're gonna do this by assuming a default. Let's assume that in most situations, the user is going to use light mode, but then in certain special situations, such as uh, after 8 p.m. and before 7 a.m., that is when the user might want to use dark mode instead to make it easier on their eyes. So that is your special case. Let's assume that default right above where these variables are declared. We can say text color equal to a dark gray, so triple two, and the background color is gonna be a white, so triple F. And now we can simply remove the else to get the exact same results. It says here, okay, your default theme is light, but if we're between 8 p.m. and 7 a.m., then change the variables to be dark mode instead. So we've got the same functionality, but we've reduced the lines of code by four, okay? So that's one way to improve that function. The next way is gonna be to make this current hour a constant instead. So we can say here, const current hour, and the reason why we're able to do that is because, well, the current hour variable is never reassigned within this function. So we can use a constant instead. And this is going to inform the reader of the code that this variable or constant is never going to change. And that right there saves an extra second of thinking because now the person reading knows that, well, that constant is never going to change. The next way to improve this function would be to uh, remove the duplication of the property names here. So uh, we can instead just do text color and then comma background color like this. And it's gonna give us the exact same result because now it's saying, okay, you want the text color property to be the value of text color, which is also assigned in this function. So let's just use that instead. And the same goes of course for background color. And the last way to improve this function is probably the way I would have written the function in the first place. And that is gonna to be to do an instant return. And this also comes back to the whole avoiding an else as well. So let's refactor this function to instantly return when we know what to do. We're actually going to take the if statement and put it at the top. So what we're doing here is we're basically putting all of our special checks at the beginning of the function, check those edge cases, and then we're going to return those values. Return instantly an object text color equal to, you know, white, as we saw earlier. And the same goes for the background color, of course, being uh, dark gray instead, just like that. So now we've instantly returned. 
which means the code down here is not going to run. But guess what? This code is going to change to return the light mode. Let's grab this, put it there, grab this, put it there. And we have something like this. So now the function has been simplified even further. There are no more declarations of variables. Okay. We're simply saying, look, let's get the theme colors. Let's check for dark mode first. If so, return straight away, bang, and we're out of the function. Otherwise, if this did not pass, we can hop down here and return the default value of light mode. And that is your four ways to improve that function with the focus being on avoiding the else or the else if statement. Next up, we're going to be talking about skipping loop iterations. Now, I know you might be thinking, why does skipping loop iterations uh, count as clean code? Well, I'm going to show you why. So right here, we've got a constant of numbers with a value of 4, 9, 2, 7, and 11. And down here with this code, it's trying to find um, which of these numbers are factors of 12. In other words, um, which of these numbers divide evenly into 12? So 4 is a factor of 12, 2 is, 9 isn't, and so on. And the code to achieve that would be to simply apply uh, 12 mod the number. If that result is going to be or is 0, then you have a factor of 12. So this loop here simply checks that condition, then console logs a message. How do we simplify this code? Well, it's going to be to skip the loop iteration in those negative uh, cases. So this is a, a similar sort of thing to uh, skipping the else check and so on. So let's hop up here and just change what this for loop looks like. So first, we're going to say if 12 mod n does not equal 0. So the whole point of this is to essentially do your... Uh, do your bad checks, okay? Check for bad data or things that, um, you know, should be skipped. So do those checks first. Then once all your validation has been passed, then you can go ahead and you can uh, do your normal behavior. So I'm going to say here, look, if 12 is not a factor, sorry, if N, the number, is not a factor of 12, we can just simply continue just like that, Okay. Otherwise, let's hop down here, indent back and perform the default behavior. Now, this doesn't seem like much in this small scenario, but imagine your if statement at the very beginning. So this one right here, let's go back. Imagine this if statement was 20 lines long. You have 20 lines of indented code instead of a single line at the very top. So go back over here, you continue, then everything's pushed back. Those 20 lines are pushed back and you have less indentation in your code. Now, another benefit is if you want to add a next, sorry, if you want to add, not a next, but if you want to add another, another condition, you can simply hop down here, add a second condition, bang, this one also checks for something and then it might skip it. So it's easy to then add on to, um, you know, in the future. So there it is, <laughs> uh, skipping your loop iterations. Last on this list involves array transformation. So what I mean by this is taking an array and then looping over it to apply changes to each element to give us a new array. So in this case here, I've got a list of names here and they've all uh, been inserted as lowercase. So a lowercase d for my name, lowercase p, lowercase a, and so on. So this code here is going to take those names and then for every single name, uppercase the first letter and add that to a new array called capitalized. So if I was to console.log what capitalized looks like, I'll just run this code here. We can see we get those capitalized names. That's the intention. We take the array and transform it to capitalize those names. Now, we're going to be doing this using array map. So the array map method is built for this purpose. Now, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, you'll know that I talk about array map quite a bit. That is because I like to see it being used, right? So 
we're going to take this names array and use array map instead to give us the same result. How do we do this? Well, let's go up to this capitalized here and replace this array, um, uh, uh, this empty array here to be instead names.map. Then the map method is going to take in a function. This function is going to run for every single item in the array and the return value of that function is going to be the new value for that item. So we can say here name as the parameter, then hop down here and simply perform the same operation. So using two uppercase on the first character and then using slice to slice off everything aside from the first character. Uh, so we can just copy that operation here and return it from this function. Make sure to update n to be name just like this. And now if I was to get rid of the for loop, we can see that we've essentially saved the two step, sorry, we've saved ourselves the two step process of, uh, you know, firstly initializing the array, then looping over, having those extra blocks and so on. It's now less lines of code with the same result. I can just run the script here and we get the same result. Now there are two alternative ways to write this code here. Uh, one of them would be to take it a step further and actually just skip out on the return altogether. So you can just go up here and get rid of the curly braces as well as the return. So something like this, I'll just get rid of the sidebar so you can see it better. There we go. So you basically have that one statement. It also becomes the return for the function. So just a shorter way of writing the function. Um, I'll run the code and we get the same result. And the second way to write this uh, code differently, and this is quite commonly seen in other languages like Python, for example, what you'll see is um, the function to perform the operation is actually written elsewhere. So you might see something like this, a function called capitalize written up here. And this function takes in a name and it's purely used to capitalize a single name. So it's reusable, right? This function is going to return the same operation once again, just like that. So now you have this universal capitalized function to use. You can then just say, okay, no worries, names.map and then say capitalize just like that. So now the same result once again, but this time your function is declared elsewhere and it also makes it a little bit more reusable. So if you want to capitalize multiple things, you write the function once and you just use it twice. I'll run the code and you get the same result. So going back to uh, improving uh, the code or uh, making this uh, you know, more clean, we're talking about here, much like the previous two examples, reducing those lines of code, um, removing the need to declare variables and so on, and just making it flow a little bit nicer. And that is all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.